Join Linwood Jackson every Sunday from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. for the all-new Linwood Jackson radio show on WFAI 1510 AM. Every Sunday, Linwood will tackle the issues close to your heart from civil rights to politics to community affairs around the first state and the nation. Linwood speaks on the issues facing citizens in our area on a weekly basis, but his show is so much more. Linwood will talk about his passions, such as dancing and traveling the world and helping people broaden their horizons while embracing different cultures. That's the Linwood Jackson radio show every Sunday from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. on the all-new WFAI 1510 AM. Hardcore man's soul. Continuing his quest to be winter. It's hardcore. A mere man's soul. Whatever he is, he destroys. It's hardcore. Resorts, casino, and hotel. Amir brought down the house. Putting the hammer down on Calvin Price. Pure power. Amir made it a spectacular fight night. Undefeated heavyweight, determined, motivated, he's an animal, he's a heavyweight beast, Johan Bach. Hardcore is on the rise, ready to claim what's his. Amir, hardcore, man sword, relentless. Game will never be the same. Big Cats Boxing and More. Studio 9 Video Pro. Amir Hardcore Band Sword. Undefeated Heavy. 20 and 0, 15 knockouts. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we got on the line the heavyweight champion, Amir Hardcore Mansir. You know, he is the uh, WBF, IBF, USBA heavyweight boxing champion. He's got 20 wins, no losses, and 15 KOs. Champ, are you there? I'm here, man. All right. How you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Blessed, man. Blessed to be alive and healthy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Now, we just played your intro um, over the air. I'm wondering, is that what you come down and get in the ring with? What's that? The, the intro. Did you hear the intro we played? No, I didn't hear it. Oh, uh, yeah, it's your intro, man, uh, uh, you know, hardcore, Amir um, 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 Mansir, and, and you you know, it's a nice beat, and you coming in, I can just picture you coming down the line, man, getting in the ring, knocking jokers out, man. That, <laughs> you know, you I know you're fresh off your December 14th, six-round KO win over uh, Kevin Price at the Resorts Casino in Atlantic City, man. How you feeling? I'm feeling good, man, you know, uh, just being blessed, being able to spend time with the family, you know, on this downtime. You know, be back in the gym like next week, man, going right back to the drawing board. All right, now, who you got coming up? You going overseas and get them boys over in Europe? Oh, we definitely trying to get overseas, man. You know, we anybody that's putting on boxing gloves, man, and, and has a, a world ranking, man, that's what we're going after. You know, we, we finally cracked the top ten, you know, and so that's the type of competition that we're looking for. I know that's right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give a shout-out right now to, so our listeners can get on. I know you're up for Fighter of the Year, uh, and you're up for the KO of the Year at Go Fight Live. And uh, they can go in there and vote for you right now at www.gfl.tv uh, forward slash P-O-L-L-S dot D-O. And vote for uh, uh, Amir Hardcore Mansoor for Fighter of the Year and KO of the Year. Man, I know it's a close running, so we need every vote we can get. Uh, I got my vote in last night, by the way. You know, tell us, man, you got you got 15 knockouts, 20 yeah. wins, and no losses, man. That, that must be a pretty good feeling. Yeah, it's a great feeling, man. You know, but it's, it's hard work and dedication, man. And um, those type of attributes, you know, when, you, when you're an athlete, pays off. Man, you got to really work hard at your craft. 
I know that's right. Well, you know, we're talking uh, today about uh, over here in Delaware. Which I know you're in Jersey right now. Is that correct? No, actually, I'm from Pennsville, New Jersey, born and raised, Selma County kid. I live in Delaware. Well, actually, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make this move to Atlanta, but right now I, I've been living in Delaware for quite a few years. So you're all too familiar with the issues we have here with uh, our kids dropping out of school and uh, the homicides uh, going on in our in our state. Uh, that yesterday I'm reading Delaware is number five in, in the country as a state for high crime. And in the, the city of Wilmington, uh, certainly. What do you think? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? What do you think we need to do to, to fix that? So going into the next year, be better. Well, you know what? One of the saddest uh, realities of answering a question like that is that when we take in the police force, the only thing that we could think of in terms of them helping is locking people up. And I really think that because these guys are out there fighting crime and and, and they are putting their lives, things of that nature, on the line, they're putting their family lives on the line, I believe that we need to start solidifying and, 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 and starting a relationship between the community and the police. These guys are supposed to be pillars of the community and not not enforcers to knock and tear down potential pillars and pillars that already exist. It's like the people against the police. And when you ask a question about how can we, you know, staunch crime, how can we stop crime, how can we reduce the crime rate, we have to add the police into the equation other than having them there just to lock up and throw away the key. So I think that one of the first initiatives we need to have is to bring the community and the police together. I know for a fact, you know, having spent so much time in prison and things of that nature, the officers that got along with us that were you know, social with us, that communicated well with us, that respected us. We respected them back in turn. So certain officers could come on the block and not have no problem whatsoever. If a fight was going to kick off, if a stabbing was going to kick off, they would say, no, such and such on, we ain't doing it. Or the officer was able to come amongst us and say, listen, and talk to us and really alleviate the problem. Now, today, our police are basically powerless. All they have as their power is handcuffs, billy clubs, and guns. And that is all that they are using. And that is all that a lot of the rookies are being taught to use. We We have to build and strengthen our community ties with law enforcement. And then, too, you know, we definitely have to start home with our kids and instilling in them certain value. I, I remember, and I don't want to be too verbose on that question, but I remember when I was a child, and i never forget my mother saying this. She said, they need to take these little kids to the morgue and show them death and let them see for themselves the finality of mm-hmm. death since they want to be so fast to pick up a gun and end somebody's life. Right, right, right. Let them see firsthand. Let them see it firsthand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, now tell you, I know you got about, uh, I know you hold the WBF, the IBF, the USBA uh, heavyweight jet. And what other belts do you hold? I, I've I've um, vacated quite a few of them. I won the WBF Continental, so because I'm the WBF Intercontinental champ, which is a more prestigious belt, the Continental title is still mine, but I'm no longer defended. Right. I won the WBO, NABO title. I vacated that, uh, won the NABF title under the uh, WBC. I vacated that. Currently, I have the IBF USBA title, and I still hold the WBF Intercontinental title. And, and what do you think about the state of boxing in Delaware? Uh, the state of boxing in Delaware is, 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 is really on the move. Uh, we've had a venue like Dover Downs out in Dover, Delaware, Dover Downs Casino, they've opened up a venue for the last several years to showcase boxing. And we've been getting very, very, you know, good crowds, 
you know, coming out to support the boxers. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, I've since I've been fighting in Dover, I've also fought in Atlantic City twice, and both times these shows in Atlantic City sold out. I don't think any Delaware fighter has ever sold out an arena in in, in Atlantic City. Right. But the way the reason why I was able to do that is because the Delaware citizens, the Delaware fans, come out and support their fighters no matter where they go. If they can make it, they're going to make it. So I think Delaware boxing is in a good uh, place today because we have some real hardcore fans man, that are going to come out and support the fighters. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, the boxing at the Bob in Newark is, is doing well. Is, uh, also, uh, Delaware is picking up. We'd like a small boxing mecca here, uh, actually. Exactly. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they're coming out of Philly. What do you think? Uh, how did you get started boxing? First time I put on a pair of boxing gloves, I was in the projects probably about five or six years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, this guy, Rossi Martin, I was bigger than him, but he was probably like five or six years older than me. And he put them gloves on and he whooped my butt. But I just kept coming and coming and coming. And he wasn't trying to beat me up or anything. I knew I couldn't beat him. But ever since then, I always wanted to box. Mm -hmm. um, guys that were my age and even one or two years older than me didn't stand a chance in the world. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't a bully. I was the guy that bullied the bully. So, like, in sixth grade, all the way up into high school, guys that were getting bullied would come up to me and say, listen, instead of him taking my lunch money, I'll give you my lunch money if you keep him off of me. Mm -hmm. And I used to do that, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, you know, I was one of those guys. I was always humble, man. I, all, I hated people being taken advantage of. You know, I never used fighting to take advantage of anybody like that. i just always been... A fighter, man. I've always been good at fighting, mm -hmm. and but I've always carried myself well. I didn't ever run around picking fights, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. or choosing fights. You know, mm -hmm. just whenever I got into a rumble, I was in a rumble. Mm -hmm. And um, I initially started really seriously boxing in uh, Yardville in New Jersey, Yardville. I was in there um, from 1990 to 92. And I started boxing there, and every day I'd go back to the chair. That's a prison for those who don't know. Right. I would go back to the chair with a bloody nose, man, and those guys used to be like, man, what is you? You crazy. Mm -hmm. And my, I was the youngest kid almost in the whole jail. My nickname was Youngin at the time, mm -hmm. Big Youngin. That's what they called me. And sooner or later, the guys that was bloody in my nose, I ended up knocking every single one of them out. Mm -hmm. And the guy that was... uh actually state champ in the prison system at the time, Jerry Martinez, I ended up fighting him in the pro ranks up in Allentown, PA, and I, I stopped him in the second round. So, I, you know, I, I, I actually really started taking boxing seriously when I was in prison, and then guys used to see me in, like, the tournaments and stuff like that, like, youngin', you better go home and turn pro, man. You hit hard. You got a knockout punch, you know, and... Then I started believing in myself. And let me tell you something. No matter how big that deck is that is stacked against you, if you have an assurity of yourself, man, and you have that inner surety of yourself, anybody out there listening, man, please don't let nobody, nobody tell you you can't do something. Because I had a hundred people telling me, especially after serving eight and a half years in prison, coming home. Mm -hmm. Oh, you too old for boxing. You've been home. You've been home. And now, 11 fights later, I'm one of the top fighters in the world. Well, that's absolutely right. You're, you're, right now, you're up for fighter of the year. And uh, for KO, a knockout uh, of the year. Uh, all the, our fans can go out there and go to uh, gotofightlive.com and vote for you. And uh, we certainly wish you luck uh, in that area. You certainly deserve it. You came a long way, champ. And uh, the boxing, we all know, teaches kids a lot. Uh, you do a lot of work with the kids. What would you tell them to keep them off the streets and out of trouble right now? Well, what I tell them, I would tell them that if they only knew how valuable their youth is and how much fun they can have as a child. You know, we got to, we got one thing we need to start doing is giving our children something to have fun with instead of these video games. 
You know, we didn't have the video games, you and I, growing up. Right. We went outside and we went outside and made games. We ran, we jumped, we swam, you know, we climbed, we crawled, you know. And now today, these kids, they don't have that genuine uh, youth experience that we were having. So we really need to get back. You remember Scope? And yeah. You remember? Yeah, I remember. Remember, mm -hmm. remember the summer programs? Mm -hmm. We got to start getting back with these politicians and making them implement these programs. We have to get with these community centers and start letting them know, look, we're not going to support y'all if y'all don't bring these type of programs back to give these kids something to do other than sitting in the house playing video games all day. And a lot of parents are doing this because they don't want their sons out in the streets. So here, give them all these video games, all that they can play, and they sitting in the house all day long, and that's why we have kids with diabetes and, mm -hmm. and, and obesity on the rise. You and I both know. You ain't never hear no child having no diabetes. Only time you heard of diabetes is somebody that was very old. You didn't hear about kids having diabetes when, when you know, 20, mm -hmm. 30 years ago. You understand? So oh, we, have to, we, have to, we have to make something for these kids. We have to give them something. We just can't say, hey, stay out of trouble. We I have to give right. them we have to give them something to occupy their time to keep them away from the trouble. Hey, hey, well, listen, Champ, uh, we appreciate you uh, coming on and sharing that. That's some great advice. Um, are you on the social mediums? And how can your fans get in touch with you? Um, they can follow me, uh, Amir Hardcore Mansour on uh, Facebook, uh, Amir Hardcore Mansour on Instagram, you know, uh, mm -hmm. at Amir the Chisant on Twitter, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm out here. You when's, your, when's your next fight? I won't know uh, when my next fight is until after this New Year and stuff like that. I'll sit down with my uh, manager and promoters, and, and, and we'll see where, where we go from here, you know. All right, brother. Hey, listen, we'll be list we'll be looking out for you on the Facebook and the social mediums, man. We appreciate you taking out time of your busy schedule and sharing with us uh, uh, and how to how to make our state uh, and the country a better place, keeping our kids out of trouble in school and and off those streets. Uh, hey, hey, thanks a lot. That was Mr. Amir uh, Mansir, heavyweight champ right now, uh, holding like six belts, and uh, he just gave us some great advice. I'm sitting here uh, sharing, all of us are sharing some uh, information on how we're going to make Delaware State a better state. We do have some calls coming in. I don't know. I think we got a caller now. Hello? Lynn Wood. Hey, who's this? Big Cat. Big Cat, James Gibbs. How you doing there, buddy? Man, you know I'm fine, man. What's going on, James? Uh, man, I was calling in, man, uh, just finished hearing... Uh, uh, hard, uh, mere hardcore man, sure doing his thing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and we proud to represent him, you know, big cat boxing and marketing. And uh, I just wanted to chime in a little bit and just let uh, him know and uh, how proud we are of him. And I'm so glad that he was able to be on a show such as yours that's so informative and so special to the uh, city of Wilmington, Delaware. Yeah, I appreciate it, Mr. Gibbs. And uh, you're doing some uh, great work yourself. Uh, I know Amir does a lot of work with you and reaching out to kids and going out into the community, uh, talking to them and, and trying to keep them out of trouble and off the streets. You got any tips and advice you'd like to share? Oh, sure, of course. I mean, actually, uh, he's a, a, a very prominent person on our board of directors. The things that he does for these children are uh, invaluable. Uh, uh, the tips that I have is, you know, put the guns down, pick the gloves up, let's take it to the gym, not to the street. That's our motto. Help one, save one kid at a time. One child can save 100, you know. So uh, we're we just real proud of you uh, for what you're doing. It's, 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 it's more than needed a voice to be heard in this city uh, that is so high on crime. Uh, we just had a, a situation in Newark uh, just last night where I think an 18-year-old, 16-year-old boy got killed uh, at a little dance they had up there, you know, I think near Brookmont, you know. So just keep on doing what you're doing. We're going to keep on doing what we're doing, and we're going to try to help stop this gun and youth violence. And, and do it one child at a time. You know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, listen, man, we, we're running out of time. Uh, we want to thank you for, for calling in, though, and, uh, uh, and and giving your tips, man. Uh, we want to thank uh, Mr. Uh, Amir Mansir, heavyweight champ, for calling in and giving his tips. All right, be blessed, bro. All right. Thanks All a right. lot, Gibbs. Stand up. It's time we stand up. Ladies, it's time we stand up. Ladies, 
brothers is a tribute to the ladies. Listen. Brothers, I got an idea. It is something that's way, way on to. It's time we stand up and give our ladies the love that they deserve from me and you. Ah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was a, a stand-up, a tribute to the ladies from Mr. Skip Bortley Jr. I wanted to give a shout-out to him as well. You can find that CD on uh, cdbaby.com or itunes.com and go out and purchase that as well. He comes in the studio often and talks again, uh, to getting our kids off the street and out of trouble. We want to support all of that, and we want to thank Skip Bortley Jr. for his musical contribution. Have a blessed holiday, everybody.